said early on, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a coach. I think I could probably pass the knowledge assessment. Um, I think I know the, I've been in enough conversations. But the performance is a completely different thing. Uh, talking on your feet, uh, making it, you know, actually delivering the performance is something that I'm not, I'm not skilled in. I would not be, uh, I would not pass the ACC. I would not pass the ACC uh, assessment. Uh, and the important part of it is that ability to perform. Uh, we have made a conscious choice. Uh, we, the, the board of the ICF, the, the community of ICF, to continue to do that performance examination. Uh, it's one of the reasons why uh, we developed the markers. I'll maybe say that for the next question. Uh, but right now, the, the current system uh, for, uh, for ACCs who have not been to an ICF accredited program, for PCCs who are coming through the portfolio process, or for MCCs, is to submit recordings of actual coaching sessions to the ICF, um, along with a transcript of that recording, a verbatim transcript of that recording. Um, we are taking those um, and sending them to our trained assessors, and they are making a, they're collecting evidence of, of what you are, uh, of the, of the, from the recording as to the level of coaching that's happening in that, in that session. Um, it is probably, um, it's, a, it's a very, it's very challenging, it's very stressful, I'm sure, for people who are going through that process, but we really wanted to select the best examples of their coaching to submit to us. And what the assessors are looking for, generally speaking, is they're looking for evidence that you're able to use the core competencies in your coaching, that you're able to use them effectively, and also that you're not doing things that are contradictory. So if you are consulting or doing therapy or counseling or um, teaching, those kinds of things in your coaching, you may do that as part of your practice. You may have a practice where you've blended consulting and with coaching, and that's okay. You, you, you know, the ultimate the end is you want to be uh, delivering something of value to your clients. And so some of your clients are going to say, uh, oh, okay, I don't have a clue what to do with this. Can you tell me something? That's when you take your coaching hat off and you're putting the soda hat on. But for the purposes of the performance exam, performance event, we want to make sure that you can jump over the bar at the level that you're applying for. Now, one, one other thing, uh, the reason I used to high jump there, the system we're trying to develop for, for PCC, I use the standard, I use the word, we want to use the, have the minimum, you want to make the minimum level of skill. Minimum sounds bad. But I don't care if you can jump over the bar by this much or by 18 feet. We want you to be able to get over the bar. If you can't get over, over the bar, then you have not met the PCC level. And that's what we're trying to be become more specific with. That's one of the reasons uh, we, we've started working with the markers. So uh, let me pause right here and open it to the group for questions you might have about credentialing that George has been talking about. Carol, I'll start with you. Um, on both of these assessments, um, if you are already certified at the level and you need to get renewal, do you have to do one or both? Right now, the, right now the standards for renewal or credential are for PCC and MCC are 40 hours of continuing education at least 24 of those hours in the area of core competency. Uh, for an ACC, it also requires 10 more hours of venture coaching. Uh, so it's further development of your skills working with you. For someone who maybe uh, lets their, uh, their credential lapse for pregnancy, will they have to go back to square one? She's an ACC, and so she's in this like, oh, do I renew? I'm almost at the she had to go through a different process or start square one? So, uh, credentials are good for three years. At the end of the three years, if you have not renewed, you have a 60 day grace period. At the end of the grace period, if you have not renewed, your credential lapses and you should not be using the logo and you should not be calling yourself a credential coach. But you actually have until the end of that year. So, if you expire in 2014, you've got January and February as. Um, lapsed, then you've got to the end of 2015, um, I'm sorry, in grace, then you've got the end of 2015 as lapsed, and at that point you expire completely, and then we ask you to reapply using the whatever, whatever. whatever system is in place at that time. Um, so it's, you're interested, unless you want 
Start over it's your Now, the other, and I'm talking primarily about the portfolio path. Uh, you know, a lot of you've gone through an ACTP, so um, I know there's probably a lot of Georgetown people in here. The ICF has approved the process that Georgetown uses for that summative assessment, for that, that hearing assessment that you do for your oral exam or your performance event. Uh, and so the ICF accepts that in place of the portfolio. They may be using a recording with transcripts, or they may have another method that they're using that the ICF has approved. It's one of the reasons, moving forward, that we want to create more standardization around that so that all the programs are going to use the same processes. But for now, there's some variation. Yeah, since the, uh, the written test and the recording are submitted evaluation, are you looking at developing a book of knowledge so that right now the materials are spread out all over? Uh, something that pulls them all together so as you're studying for the test, or you're ensuring that you understand what the knowledge base is, that you have a reference to to go to? It's a really great question. And it's something that we have really worked on in, in, um, in terms of identifying what is the formal body of knowledge for us. And we did, a couple years ago, we did some work that really what we came up with that we could validate was that the ICF definition of coaching, the ICF core competencies, and the code of ethics are really the body of knowledge that we that we own. Now the, the issue is there are hundreds of things underneath that. Um, you know, if you talk about positive psychology or organizational development, there are all kinds of things that, that contribute to that. Um, there's a really great graphic of this tree with all these roots of where all these things have come from and then where it branches out into all kinds of different things. So getting the, we started doing some research on um, what are the things that people rely on in terms of the body of knowledge and we're trying to, and it's all over the place, uh, because people are coming from so many different things to different uh, professions, different backgrounds to apply coaching. But yes, the, the right for right now, the reference that we tell people is definition of coaching. You know, in other words, what's the difference between coaching and something else? The, um, the uh, core competencies uh, and the code of ethics. So putting that into something, uh, if you're familiar with Project Management Institute, uh, the PMBOK, putting something into a body of knowledge document that is concise and that you can use to study something that we're aiming for. And, and it, but it, again, it's a, it's a struggle because trying to, we try to get, in this body of research, we try to get agreement on what's most important or even what it is that you read to prepare yourself as a coach and it is coming from so many different places. Um, that um, it's, it, it's a real challenge there. How about one more question? Yes, ma'am. Could you share the current success rate on the written exam? Uh, about uh, 80, I think the last time I looked, which was about three weeks ago, was about 86% for the English version. Um, less for some of the other language versions, and that means that we have to do a uh, better job on translation. But uh, we're seeing a, a really good success rate. And, and that's, and that actually, that we scared the heck out of people by adding this uh, uh, written portion. Uh, just anecdotally, uh, we said we're going to start requiring it in April. In March, uh, we had uh, 4,000, 3,000. Uh, uh, so we, we've always had this nice, we've just kind of recovered from that. So good, good success. Can I make a comment? Go for it. Um, we both recently took it three weeks ago, and exactly what you said, if you go over the definition, the code of ethics, and that, the bulk of what we needed to know was right in there, and the rest came from our program. Um, but it wasn't, it was scarier to me before we took it. But it, oh, was, yeah. <laughs> it was a relief when it was over, but it wasn't like a killer test that we should have studied for her. We got it in our program. In some, yeah, in some ways, it's really, I think, hard just to study for it. You know, it's, we don't have
had questions on there like, what's competency number two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the questions are more, they're really written to where you have to apply the knowledge. And in some ways, if you haven't really internalized it and really understand it, uh, that's where that's where people, and that's why people who have not come through an ICF credit <coughs> program um, are not doing well. It's because they, they maybe have not been uh, as immersed in the competition. So I'm going to shift us to PCC markers now. Okay. Yeah, so what are they? How come we have markers? What, what are these all about? Okay, so my, my big statement is they, that uh, we didn't change the core competencies. Um, but, but here's what, well, this morning was a really good example. So this morning, um, uh, the, the, bad, the bad coaching demonstration, First one. First part. Uh, the general consensus probably in the room was, well, that's bad. Okay, I'll, I'll share with you. One person came up to me at the break and she said, My first thought when I was watching you was, she's an MCC. <laughs> so holistically, everybody could kind of pick up on that was probably not, you know, a great person specialized. And we have our assessors over the years have used the, the ICF core competencies as the tool for assessing um, for ACC, PCC, and MCC. Uh, but the language, uh, in a lot of times I think, and, and I, let me say this first, the, the assessors have done a really great job. Um, they've really built, they've been responsible for helping to build a really strong program. Uh, but one of the things that was lacking was that specificity. Uh, was being able to have language that, uh, that described what was happening more specifically. And so after that, uh, bad demo here, uh, you all start to say, well, you, you know, I didn't hear this, or I heard this, or you started providing those specifics. So about uh, a few years ago, uh, we, were, we were looking at the data on assessments, the on performance of them. And uh, we recognized the need to do more training for assessors because we were seeing a lot of variation, um, a lot of uh, uh, a lack of iterator reliability. So one assessor may say it was this, and the other assessor said it was this. Um, and we were doing some steps to, to mitigate that. But at the same time, the problem was, in some ways, was in the tool that you're, that you're using. One of my favorite expressions is the only you got to hammer everything starts to look like a nail. Okay, so we didn't have enough tools in the toolbox to be able to do this. So we decided we needed to have this meeting. We brought subject matter experts together, and Mark the Book, who's my boss, and CEO of ICM, and I met with a really great group in Chicago. That's when I was in Chicago. <laughs> anyway, and we said, you know, we're going to have this three day meeting, and we're just going to kind of, you are going to tweak the system, we're going to robust. And we had this really great panel from all over the world there, and we started talking about this and about what was happening with assessment. And in about 15 minutes, we looked at each other and said, oh, hell, you know, this is going to take a lot more work. This is going to take a lot more effort to really make this right. And so what we started to do, we, we spread the team down a little bit further. And we've really been working with a team of, uh, really there's four individuals that have been, uh, I've been working with quite extensively, uh, Margaret Kriegbaum, Soren Holm, Hope Lander, and Kat Matthews, which a lot of people know that, uh, around developing system that allowed for more fairness, more objectivity, um, more uh, specificity, um, repeatable, defensible, those were the things that we were going for. We wanted, if I'm an assessor and I hear it and you're an assessor, you should hear pretty close to the same thing. So we started looking at, okay, how do other bodies do this? How are other organizations or other, uh, what are other methods of doing this? We looked at, um, uh, discussion analysis technology. We looked at uh, lots of different things and we, we started looking at, uh, first of all, when we first started, we were thinking, okay, how do we develop this ACC, PCC, MCC framework? Uh, but what became real clear really quick was we, we saw a difference between ACC, PCC, and MCC. The ACC, again, we're looking at a, a, a knowledge that people need to have. And in a lot of ways, uh, um, it was okay to have kind of a formulaic approach to coaching. That's, that's what you would expect early on when somebody's practicing something. Uh, for PCC, 
there was a level of technical skill that was needed that we felt to, to get to that. There were behaviors, there were things that you could hear. Uh, and so the, the group started working on what are the things, what are the essential things that you can hear uh, within a coaching conversation that will let you know that is evidence of someone's understanding of uh, the competencies, their use of their competencies. Um, consulting with some, some testing experts, of course, all of them said, well, you know, you should have this uh, standardized framework and you require the coach to go through this and they, uh, if they say this, then you would expect to hear this answer. And if they say this, you would expect to hear this answer. Or if the client says this, you would expect to hear Well, that just doesn't work for coaching. Uh, it's a very fluid, transactive process. Uh, there was no way to really put it into this, this framework. So we started going back and looking at it. what is it that we hear uh, during a coaching conversation that lets us know that the competencies are our limits. Um, we um, had lots and lots and lots of hours of discussion. Uh, and my, my focus was to try to get this down to a uh, short list, a manageable list of essential behaviors. Um, so I think we started with 100 and something, and uh, of course my goal was 20, but that's, I, I didn't know what the goal was, but, uh, but again, trying to get it down to what are the essentials. So we, again, lots of deliberation about this, and we pulled together, we have 47 statements right now, 47 statements of things that assessors should hear uh, as evidence, as possible evidence of, uh, of the competence of being exhibited. Uh, and you, you used five of those 47 today. When you looked at the markers that were up on the screen here and you did your exercise, those five were five of the 47. So just so you know what we're talking about. So, so we, we started after we went that list down to that, those 47. We did a, a kind of a proof of concept. And we we had the team review several several reports using these, these to see did these work. Um, we have uh, we identified a broader group of what we call the trainer team that we also had work with these and we began to uh, we made a few adjustments, uh, but we're generally trying to uh, see if this if these indicators tell us something. Um, so I'm wondering, if I'm applying for my PCC credential, do I have to demonstrate all 47 of these markers then? No. It's hard enough with 11 competencies. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that we do want, and without going into this discussion about how we arrive at how many or the, the, fun, the foundation is, it's really important, we, we, we have to see a demonstration of your use of all of the competencies. Now that doesn't mean all the markers are checked. Because if you look at the, all the whole body of markers, there are some things that, that happen here, but they also are evidence of, of this other marker as well. Um, so we're looking for some for people to have the ability to work in all these areas. And I'll say, as opposed to the, to the use, but the, the, current, the current system, the old system, where somebody could do really well in one area and nothing in another area, and if you ran the averages, they still ended up with credential. We think it's really important that people be able to exhibit uh, in these reporting for submitting uh, evidence that they have an understanding they can deliver in all of these areas. Um, I think probably um, as we move forward, what we will be looking at uh, is what uh, markers are consistently marked. So in other words, if there's one that's marked in every single budget conversation, it's not telling us. There's one that's never marked, there's something wrong there too. Um, so we can actually, this gives us the ability to do almost an item analysis of what is happening in coaching with the idea that moving forward, we're going to make adjustments to these. Uh, the other thing that we did not want to create was a system that was so drastically different in terms of the, the success rate of what is happening now. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, the so in some ways we're trying to equate it to the current system and we have to kind of back into that. So we've run lots of different models of how we do calculations and those kinds of things. But right now we think we have a really good tool that is, uh, that is proving uh, useful to, uh, to, to demonstrate competency in all areas. I know when the uh, markers first were announced, a lot of people said they were taking the place of the core competencies. 
They were the new core competencies. And that's not true. Um, they are they are further um, for any specificity to the core competencies. Um, so I think that's important to remember that that this is not brand new. This is just some behavioral markers that are evidence of the same core competencies that you were trained in. I know a lot of people have confusion about that. Well, one more thing before we end the question. Yeah. Uh, it's really important, we think, and we've tried this out, is it's not a checklist for coaching. Um, we don't want somebody sitting at the table you know, with their client and saying, one, I'm going to say that, and now I'm going to go to one number two, and I want to make sure I hit every one of these. Uh, what we see happening when that's in, in those cases is there's no presence there, there's no uh, there's no depth to the conversation. Um, so again, they are helpful to you in looking at okay, here's what the ICF is looking for. Here's some examples. This is more specificity to the to the, to the competencies. But it's not a checklist for coaching. I would love to turn it in. Not really, but if it was a math problem, it'd be great. You know, if I could say, you know. One of these plus two of these and one more of these. Okay, that's a four. Okay, we're good. You're, you're, you're a piece of uh, It's not ever going to be a math problem. Uh, there's still going to be a level of subjectivity to this for the assessors. Uh, so, so trying to, to, to gain it into a checklist for, for someone to coach from uh, is not, is not going to work. So I have one more question from my list and then we're going to invite some questions from you all. Uh, are there going to be markers for ACC level and MCC level also? So right now we are still uh, we're, we're conducting ACC assessments with the process we're using. Mainly though now we're using the knowledge mark, the knowledge test as the indicator for ACC. Uh, and um, this is a more complicated answer because what we want to develop uh, within the training programs for ACC, more opportunity for formative assessment, so and, and transformative assessment. So, in all of your coach training, what you should be getting is opportunities to practice under the guidance of a well-qualified instructor who is giving you feedback, mentoring you uh, on on what you are learning. That's formative feedback that you should be getting. So, by the time you graduate uh, with your first 60 hours, that you can go for the ACC. We want to make sure. Uh, within the programs that you have had lots of opportunities to practice under someone's guidance. So we've changed the rules in the accreditation process. So accreditation is about programs, credentialing is about individuals. So we changed some rules in the accreditation process to make sure that more mentoring is happening there. There's some other parts of that we'll talk about later but that we need to develop. Um, so we're not currently working on ACC markers. However, we are working on MCC. I'm not sure I would call them markers right now. MCC is a very uh, much more challenging place to, to work because um, we feel like people should have the, the technical skills that people have at the PCC level uh, and should be able to demonstrate those. But MCC is not just more, bigger, better PCC. So, you know, the, a marker that asks a powerful question. The MCC marker is not asking really more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're, we're looking at uh, how do we how do we establish uh, part more depth in the partnership, more depth in the uh, in the agreement, more cumulative listening, um, more um, fluidity, flexibility, lack of. Not that a model is bad, but, but that you are truly in response to the client uh, at a very deep level. And so we can, we, it's kind of one of those things you know it when you hear it, but how do you define it in a way that you can train others to hear it? Um, and so it's a really big challenging process, and we are beyond struggling a little bit with what's the best way to make a, make a move in this area. Because um, it's important that. Um, Again, it would be uh, fair, consistent, valid, reliable, defeatable, defensible. Uh, and um, again, it's, it's, very, it's a very, uh, there's a lot of subjectivity there. So, yes, the answer to the question, yes, we're working on it. I'm not sure what they're going to look like at the end of the day, but we have a lot of work on it. Uh, to so, let's take a couple questions from the audience and start right here. Um, 
So, in terms of the two recordings for the PCC and the MCC, do you want folks to hit all 11 in each one, or is it, you know, within those two recordings you covered the 11? In each one. They're writing separately, and uh, assessors really know. Some assessors may hear both of the boards and some don't. How about a So this document uh, that is used to be on your website about the rating levels, is this no longer relevant? Because this was some behaviors, but it's not perhaps as clear as your markers. Actually, I think it's still relevant. I think it's still good. We, we had to look at the markers against that and didn't really see any contradictions. Okay, so um, but when you're, but the markers are more relevant for your uh, for recordings, for the submitting your recordings, um, aren't they? Well, the, the markers are definitely going to be used for the recordings, but actually... Uh, How are you using this, then? Okay, this the assessors are still using that as a tool. They are. Um, but, but mainly for ACC and MCC right now. Well, actually, right now, for ACC, PCC, and MCC. Uh, we're going... Okay, so we are... Uh, training assessors to work in this new process with the markers. Uh, we have not shared, we don't share that, well, they've already seen it, but we don't use that document with them, which is the core competencies to pair document. We don't share that, but in effect, it's still a useful tool for people who are preparing for the PCC because the markers are reflected in, in what's in that. I see. So it's just another evolution, kind of, of what's here. Exactly. And so a lot of that document says, do this, don't do this. Yeah. This is, what is it that we hear that lets us know that you did this? So if this is, the markers are more of an affirmative behavioral example yes. of the core competence. Yes. And I would just, I want to jump in here. I would add, we're focused, because we have George in the room, on credentialing. But I would propose the markers that you have in your hands now are a great resource for you as a coach for your own development. MCC is a great, for me, it's great to include these. Um, no matter what level you're at, it can be used as a self-development tool as well. So we're really focusing on the credentialing process here. But don't forget, these can be used in other ways as well. How about uh, two more? Okay, four more questions. We'll <laughs> start with Terry. I just want to ask, is it therefore, is it though copyrighted permissible for us to use those markers in all kinds of coaching settings? Yes, I would say just as long as you attribute them to ICF and don't you know, call them your own work. <laughs> George, is there any plan of but you, you mentioned subject matter experts and doing you know crunching the numbers on inter rate of reliability and all the other statistics that go with that. Is there any plan of foot to take the albeit scant body of knowledge that represents any peer reviewed journal study on coaching? and have someone do some type of meta-analysis that is really hardcore done to inform how this is being driven and, and, and developed. Okay, so one of the things that we've done recently, uh, I said, we're the director of coaching research, coaching science. And one of their tasks is going to be looking at this type of uh, analysis. Or, and that would include both uh, initiating research as well as collating the research that's already out there around this. Um, the other thing that uh, is kind of related is, I talked earlier about we did a job analysis, we're getting ready to do another one. Um, we're getting ready to do a process in, in February with, um, with personal and business coaches as well as with internal coaches to see if there's a, two different studies to see if there is a difference in what an internal coach is. Now I'm talking about internal in terms of you are an employee of an organization and you're coaching within an organization. Is there a difference in what they have to know and the skills they have versus, I say, generic coach, uh, uh, the, the personal uh, external. external coach that is yeah, that's, that's working with, with clients from all of this. And so what we want to learn from that is, first of all, are there differences in what we saw from it? Is there a gap between what we saw or differences between years ago and now what's new and the turnaround of that is okay then that becomes if, there are, if we do see differences then that becomes um, advice for programs as they're training coaches uh, and it also uh, becomes the fuel for our assessment process um, and 
uh, so, so that's what it's going to. So two more questions, Steve, you have to I'm just curious if you could share what the pass rate is for uh, MCC applications. Uh, first to 10, probably about 40%. Uh, pass rate for MCC applications. 40%? First, first to 10. Done is because it spreads out over time, um, and it's it's an area of concern. Now, it's also a philosophical question. Uh, so.